good evening so we were just seeing how the chelation is operating to a particular metal complex say center m which is bound to so many amine groups say and if in the reaction we just allow it to react with ethylene diamine so what is happening to its k values and if we just consider that these k values can have two determining factors one is the corresponding enthalpy term and another is the corresponding entropy term so how these two values the entropy term and the enthalpy term can balance the corresponding values for the delta g0 such that we can consider that the reaction is spontaneous and the reaction is moving from left to right because we'll be discussing something where we just go on changing the nature of the chelating ligand because monitoring the substitution of these monodentate groups by some other monodentate groups has some effect but it is not always very much encouraging to study the corresponding complex equilibria by replacing all the six monodentate ligands by some other monodentate group only thing that if we can have some arrangement where this ammonia group with two electrons as lone pair binding to the metal center is changed with a steric bulk related to the phosphine groups pph3 which is also bound to the metal center and the property of the metal center is greatly changed or greatly enhanced towards some catalytic activity then only we can consider the corresponding binding of the metal center by replacing the water molecules bound water molecules by ammonia and ammonia by phosphine and that we'll see that how the nature of these monodentate ligands can enhance can contribute to the reactivity pattern of the corresponding metal complexes but here we see that the corresponding ligands so when we use a bidentate ligand we get some values for these thermodynamic parameters from measurement of those values we can say something that the contribution is either entropy control or enthalpy control so if we move from ethylene diamine to any other tridentate ligand say by changing the corresponding values of the arms that means diethylene triamine or triethylene tetramine or at the end we have the edta edta in anionic form that means the edta 4 minus so where we see that since we are talking about the binding of these metal ions particularly those where octahedral center is generated and if we get to use for single step complexation reactions so we don't care about the intermediate binding of one after another of these monodentate groups 
but instead we can consider a single step coordination of the ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid to the metal center. So, in a single step it can form the MEDTA complex and the binding constant for that would be very high. It will have both the corresponding enthalpy contribution as well as the entropy contribution for the formation of this MEDTA complex. So, this metal EDTA complex how nicely or how quickly we can form to trap these metal ions from the system that we will see how we can use. So, these thermodynamic parameters are definitely helping us to favor some of these reactions particularly the formation of these groups. So, when the formation constant is very large we can consider that it favors the formation of the complexes and it immediately goes from the left hand side to the right hand side very quickly. So, we see the tremendous effect of the chelation and we consider them as the corresponding chelate effect the, because they have some additional stability which can be compared with the corresponding binding of the monodentate ligands such as simple water molecules or simple aqua complex which are forming over there and can be considered as due to the effect of the corresponding parameter as the entropy term. So, delta G is well known the well known corresponding relationship for the delta H minus T delta S and a negative delta G is obviously giving us some idea that the corresponding complexes in reaction is spontaneous and thermodynamically favored. So, we are not bringing at this particular point the corresponding aspect which is also controlling and which is also contributing the coordination equilibria is the corresponding kinetic term. How quickly or how fast they are forming in a particular reaction that will deal with some other classes where we will be talking about the kinetic aspect of the complex formation and that kinetic aspects are also very important in studying the corresponding reaction mechanism in all these complexes. So, it would be thermodynamically favored and the delta G can give us some idea about how they are thermodynamically favored. So, initial formation of one chelate ring therefore gives us some idea that the entropy is playing the important role to the formation of these complexes. Because in this particular case we are talking about the reaction of the hexaamine complex with that of the ethylene diamine and we are considering that one species is already the corresponding complex species which is dicatonic also is reacting with the neutral ethylene diamine molecule. So, we are not considering anything related to some electrostatic interaction between the cationic species and some anionic species or any other hydrogen bonding interactions or any other non covalent interactions are operating between these two species. But only driving force is that we are talking in terms of two individual species present in the solution during the reaction that means on the left hand side and after the reaction one particular ethylene diamine coordination can remove two ammonia molecules. So, two ammonia molecules are removing from the medium and when in a single step the triskelate is forming we will see that six ammonia molecules will be removing there. So, altogether we have large number of species forming in the solution and we will have a definite entropy contribution for the chelate formation. So, that is true when 3 ethylene diamine molecules are reacting with this hexamine compound or this hexamine compound is reacting with EDTA molecule also. So, the hexadentate EDTA molecule immediately taking away the complex as the corresponding unique species as the single species by the removal of all the bound ammonia molecules. So, that is why whenever we have the multidentate ligands coordinating to the metal center and if it is the corresponding ACO complex we will see that 
large number of water molecules are surrounding over the molecule and when the ligand is directly binding to the metal ion all the bound water molecules will be removed in a single step and large number of species will be available for a reaction which we see that the, in the right hand side we have large number of species. So, definitely we will have contribution from the entropy term because the greater the number of species the greater will be the entropy contribution for the delta G value. Thus, delta S for this reaction is positive that means delta S value is changing due to the change in the number of species from left to right. So, for the reaction the negative T delta S this is the delta this T delta S in the equation is therefore is a negative term. So, the positive value of the delta T will contribute towards the value for the delta G and the delta G is negative and we will have the corresponding contribution for the negative delta G value for a spontaneous reaction. So, we have the example for the corresponding chelation with ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid and EDTA in the deprotonated form. Four acetic acid groups attached to the EDTA molecule can give rise to the tetraanionic form and in all cases so, all transition metal ions and other main group elements also they immediately go and bind in this form. Whether the metal center is favoring a corresponding octahedral geometry or not, but EDTA can bind through its some of its important donor groups like nitrogen and oxygen to the metal center removing all the water molecules which were bound to the metal ions from here. So, in this particular case 2 species from the left will contribute 7 species in solution towards right. So, again the delta G value if we consider this will contribute more for the entropy thing. So, that will give rise to the corresponding delta G value higher and this delta G value will also definitely contribute towards the corresponding formation constant. So, formation constant for the metal EDTA complexes would be higher. So, this particular thing is a very good condition for the chelation therapy. So, therapy is dependent on the chelation metal ion chelation. If we are considering something in our body related to the binding of the metal ion by a unique ligand system which is EDTA. So, EDTA can trap any metal center nicely and remove from our body from the environment from any other system. So, these are the some examples of some harmful metal ions like lead like mercury and like cadmium. So, they are also industrially polluting metal centers. So, mercury, lead and cadmium can pollute the corresponding water in the environment and it can be also some industrial effluent. So, lead is utilized very much in the industry from paint and all other cases. Mercury is utilized for several other cases like electrochemical cells, mercury cells and all and cadmium is required for the battery making thing. So, they are highly polluting our environment in the water level in the water system. So, if we want to purify that water we have to trap the metal ion from the solution state because they are in the cationic form most of the cases not in the free metal form. And immediately we can use EDTA to bind these metal ions and lead will bind EDTA to form the corresponding lead EDTA complex. And this particular lead which we know that this is harmful to our body also because it can kill some important cells in our body. But this particular lead EDTA complex when it is forming it can be removed from our body. So, body can excrete this from the body our system without any problem we can remove this from our body. Similarly, if we can have some iron overload in our body. So, iron overload can also be counteracted by the use of EDTA in case of thalassemia patients. The, 
the blood transfusion is required to the patient so large amount of blood is given to the patient so blood containing iron is getting loaded in the body for the patient so we have to take out this extra iron which is not utilized for the blood synthesis in the patient's body so that iron can also be taken out by the use of edta so the edta utilized there can be a very good medicinal thing and the chelation therapy would be useful for the binding of all these metal ions so now going from these ligand system how they are contributing to the equilibrium of metal and the ligand system now we just move on to the classification of the different metal ions for their type of binding potential so metal ions could be described as class a type so among the all the metal ions starting from the transition metal ions to the main group metal ions and the lanthanides and the actinides will have one particular class and that class is labeled as a only if they form good bonds with the nitrogen oxygen and fluorine donor atoms so they can form stronger complexes if the ligand system has nitrogen oxygen and fluorine then the other system that means other type of ligands whose donor atoms are bigger that means phosphorus sulfur and chlorine compared to nitrogen oxygen and fluorine so compared to nitrogen if we use phosphorus compared to oxygen if we use sulfur and compared to fluorine if we use chlorine we get another class of metal ions which have a different preference for the metal ion binding and we call them as class b metal ions so all these metal ions can be classified as class a and class b how by looking at the corresponding combination of metal with the ligand so metal is there so depending upon their choices for coordination to this particular donor atom so the donor atoms are important so if it has some immediate preference for these donor atoms we get the class a type if the other types are preferred other group of donor atoms are preferred we get the class b type of metal ions so we find that when we are talking in terms of the corresponding nickel the first transition series element the 3d element nickel 2 plus and it immediately forms stronger complexes with amines so far from our studies on these classes we have seen that nickel as a corresponding nickel salt say nickel chloride or nickel nitrate which is forming and which is available as the corresponding hexa aco compound is immediately reacting with the ammonia molecules and the corresponding hexamine complexes are forming very easily but they are not so easily forming the corresponding phosphine complexes say triphenyl phosphine or some other phosphine substituted by different r groups but going down from nickel 2 plus to palladium 2 plus that means from 3d element to 4d element we have some choice to know that palladium 2 plus can form stronger complexes with phosphine than amine so we should have some preference for the formation of nickel nitrogen bond and palladium phosphorus bond so we'll see that depending upon the environment what we are getting from the 
metal complexes or some biological molecules or some catalyst that means the nickel nitrogen assembly is preferred similarly palladium phosphine assembly is preferred for their stability as well as sometimes their reactivity to some other reactions. So, nickel will be preferring all nitrogen donor ligands and palladium will be preferring the phosphorus related ligands. So, we just propose some theory which is well known by HSAB theory, hard and soft acid base theory. So, hard and soft acid base theory will talk us something related to two cases that means we can have a situation where something will be calling as hard and something will be denoting as soft. So, when we talk about the corresponding complexes and reaction that means the metal ligand complexes and reaction we will have both hard metal center and the ligand can be characterized also hard ligand. Similarly, in case of soft system we can have the soft metal center that means the soft acid and the soft ligand system that means the soft base. So, ML reactions what we know now that it can also be considered as the corresponding acid base reaction because metal ions can be considered as the corresponding acids and ligands can be considered as the corresponding bases. So, this theory what it tells us that we have classified class A and class B such as nickel and palladium. So, class L metals or metal ions are hard acids and class B metals or metal ions are soft acids. So, first category is for H that means the hard acids and the second category is the S acids. So, such example we can have the copper in lower oxidation state that means the copper 1 it can be classified as a borderline. So, it is neither hard nor soft it is the borderline case because it can have the dual affinity that it can bind both nitrogen as well as phosphorus which are well known as hard base and the soft base ligand system or the donor atoms. So, hard acids form stronger complexes with hard bases than with soft bases. So, hard acids will have only preference for hard bases. The general terms for the hard hard interactions. So, we will be considering all these metal ligand complexes and reaction as either hard hard reactions or soft soft interactions. So, that will be very much easy to identify that what type of metal will prefer what type of ligand if we can classify these in terms of the corresponding interactions as hard hard interactions and soft soft interactions. So, hard hard interactions are predominantly electrostatic in nature that means we can have higher oxidation states on the metal centers and high charge density on the ligand center and small atom on the ligand system. So, which should be mostly electrostatic in nature and soft soft interactions are predominantly covalent in nature. So, if we consider other cases also that means the non covalent interactions in metal complexes. So, metal when reacting with the ligand system we have the electrostatic interactions first then at some points also we can have the covalent interactions also and then if we proceed further for the interaction like hydrogen bonding interactions or say other non covalent interactions like hydrophobic interactions or van der Waals interactions we will see that these interactions would be of different types which we cannot classify as hard hard interactions or soft soft interactions. So, starting from purely electrostatic interactions to covalent interactions we can have some other interactions as well. So, this all these things that means is a famous paper in 
Journal of American Chemical Society, 1963 by Ralph G. Pearson. He proposed first that thing and categorized the metal ions first as two different types as hard and soft. So, when we consider the corresponding coordination of the bases, it will be very easy to identify that the hard acids and hard bases, how we can characterize them that means they have the corresponding characteristic properties that both hard acids and hard based can have small atomic and ionic radius. That means if the oxidation state is high that means the, if they have high oxidation state the size is small and the ionic radii is also small. So, if we just simply go from Fe 2 plus to Fe 3 plus. So, oxidation state is changing. We are going from a lower oxidation state to a higher oxidation state and the size of this species is changing. So, this will have a bigger ionic radius and this will have a smaller ionic radius. So, the radius will tell us that the type of interaction between this metal center with the ligand system, the available ligand system what we can have in our hand would be more electrostatic type. More electrostatic type is already we have presumed that more electrostatic interaction would be between hard hard interactions. So, if the ligand is of hard type, the ferric ion will react will favor the corresponding interaction for the ML bond formation rather than the ferrous ion. It can have low polarizability once the size is small the polarizability of the atom or the ion is also less. So, smaller atoms and smaller ions will not go for polarization of the charge that means the charge separation at one side it is positively charged and the other side it is negatively charged and which can also be controlled by the Fajans rules as we all know. So, hard bases the ligands which we are considering as the corresponding hard bases have the corresponding HOMO the highest occupied molecular orbitals of low energy and hard acids have lowest unoccupied molecular orbitals of high energy. So, the energy parity for these two are different. So, the hard base will have the corresponding HOMO of low energy that means they are in the lower lying level. So, they can donate the electron density efficiently to the metal ion and the metal ion will have the corresponding hard acids have the lowest unoccupied molecular battle. So, this is also the lowest one. So, this ligand will have the highest one and this one. So, we have the corresponding matching HOMO and LUMO for the metal and the ligand. So, hard acids are the examples for the most important hard acids which is a very small one is the proton. So, H plus is the well known hard acid and with respect to the H plus we can think of the comparison of all other reactions or all other metal ligand formation and the lighter alkali metal ions lithium to potassium then titanium if we consider the titanium from the first transition series the titanium in the tetravalent state which is easy to get also chromium in the trivalent state not in the bivalent state chromium also in the hexavalent state and for the molecule like BF3 also. So, for BF3 molecules we can have some good base like ammonia which can interact with BF3 forming the BF3 ammonia molecule as the corresponding complex. Similarly, the soft acids and soft bases tend to have the corresponding characteristics which we can also level together which we are not leveling differently that means one for acid and one for base, but they are all together can have large atomic and ionic radius. So, they are all of bigger size, 
both the metal as well as the ligand they can be of low or zero oxidation state so if a metal center is there that means if the palladium is available and if this palladium is in zero oxidation state or this palladium is in the plus one oxidation state so it will be definitely when the oxidation state is zero it will definitely be soft in nature so not only palladium which is bigger in size in plus two oxidation state but the oxidation state control is also there as we reduce the center from palladium 2 plus to palladium 0 we are making the center more softer and it will definitely prefer more coordination with the phosphorus type of ligand rather than the nitrogen type of ligand when the oxidation state is reduced from 2 to 0. So, it will have low or zero oxidation state both will be soft that means if it is acid that means the metal ion we can have the low or zero oxidation state. Similarly, the bases that means the corresponding donor atom which is utilized for the corresponding base. Then high polarizability that means the bigger size of the atom or the ion compared to oxygen if we have the sulfur donation. So, that sulfur donation can be considered as soft donation because it has bigger size and it has high polarizability. It can polarize its corresponding charge from two parts one can be positively charged and another can be negatively charged with delta plus and delta minus polarizability which is not very hard and it can have low electronegativity that means it is not preferring electron much when they are shared with other atoms. So, these four types or four characteristic features can level a particular center as a soft center or soft acid center or a soft base center. Similarly, the organization of the corresponding level of the molecular orbitals because these all will be talking again in terms of the corresponding binding when we will talk about the corresponding bonding features. Say when we will be talking about the corresponding bonding of say very simple molecule like tetracarbonyl nickel. So, this tetracarbonyl nickel basically we just see that nickel is binding with four carbon monoxide molecules with nickel in zero oxidation state and both the nickel and the carbon monoxide molecule the corresponding uh, levels for the molecular orbitals. So, the molecular orbital diagram basically will be useful to us. So, molecular orbital diagram we can have and depending upon the donation and the acceptance whether this particular metal center is responsible for donation. So, we can have the matching orbitals and we have the field levels here and we have the empty level over here. Then only this particular electron density can be donated to the empty level and we can have some interaction between the metal center and the ligand. Similarly, if we can have two other matched levels where the field ligand level can be donated to the empty metal level, we can have also a different type of bonding in synergistic manner and we can have the multiple bond between the nickel and the carbon center. So, we see that the soft bases what we have seen in case of the hard definition, the bases have homo of higher energy than hard bases and soft bases have LUMO of lower energy than hard acids. So, the corresponding ordering of the HOMO and LUMO energy level, if we theoretically calculate all these levels, the HOMO level and the LUMO level for the metal and the ligand, then we should be able to tell about the corresponding softness and hardness of the metal center as well as the ligand center. So, However, the soft base homo energies are still lower than the soft acid lumo energies. So, the corresponding energies will definitely tell us whether it is in the higher part or whether it is in the higher side or in the lower side 
that a particular system can function as a hard acid or hard base or a soft acid or a soft base. So, the example for the different soft acids would be the methyl mercury species, then the platinum 2 plus the palladium 2 plus so as already we have seen the palladium 2 plus in the bivalent state can go and bind to the corresponding phosphorus centers only instead of the nitrogen center which is hard. Then silver, then gold all are in the monovalent state. Then mercury 2 plus also little bit in the softer side, then mercurous ion cadmium 2 plus and BH3, not BF3, BF3 was hard but BH3 is soft. So, what we see that when we have the mercury mercury bond and the charge is not much, the mercurous ion which is Hg22 plus is also of soft nature. Similarly, this CH3Mg the methyl mercury species which is a very useful organometallic component, how it can react with the corresponding other anions say ligands that is also very important to know. So, if we have the mercury as Hg2 plus and this we all know how mercuric ion can bind because we know that this mercuric ion is present in mercury chloride, but if we can get from there the corresponding methyl mercury species and which would be soft and it will definitely prefer the corresponding soft anion say I minus compared to F minus. So, once we can utilize for some metal center where the center is converted to a soft type. So, it will definitely attract the corresponding anion whether we are talking it in terms of the corresponding complex formation or binding it can only prefer the corresponding soft counterpart as its ligand to bind. Similarly, the, uh, the gold and the silver ion can also bind in the similar fashion towards the corresponding species as the corresponding soft acids. And the soft bases are as we already told you that the corresponding phosphine, the phosphorus based ligand, the corresponding phosphine would be there. Then hydride ion which is the soft base, so the H minus would be the soft base to the ligand system. So, all hydrido ligands can give us the corresponding soft ligand for the reaction. Then thiocyanate anion, so the sulfur end basically, the sulfur end is softer compared to the nitrogen end. So, when thiocyanate anion is binding through sulfur, it is soft and then I minus what we have seen just now for binding with methyl mercury anion. So, these two binding is very easy to monitor. So, we have if we have methyl mercury it will bind with iodide. Similarly, if we have silver ion it will just prefer for binding to I minus rather than F minus. So, this is some situation what we get for the corresponding molecules where the centers like this that if we have the iron center and which is basically going for binding to thiocyanate and iron is present in the ferric state which is a very useful test for the corresponding red blood coloration and the identification of iron in solution by addition of sodium or ammonium thiocyanate to the medium and it immediately gives the octahedral complex if we use the corresponding stoichiometric proportion that means 1 is to 6 stoichiometry if we utilized for reaction with ferric ion it will just bind through 6 sides of an octahedral geometry 
and all these groups basically are bind through nitrogens only. So it is not that some of them are binding to the iron center through nitrogen and some of them are binding through sulfur. This is because the ferric center what was present is already hard in nature. So, when the ferric center is first binding to the thiocyanate as NCS to nitrogen that means one iron nitrogen bond is formed and the combination that means from one side it is hard hard combination. The ferric and the nitrogen from the thiocyanate side is hard hard combination. So, that hard hard combination is not changing the corresponding character of the iron towards the soft side. It is it was rather as hard and it still remains as hard when it is binding to at least one thiocyanate through its nitrogen. So, as more and more thiocyanate groups are binding to the ferric side, it is not changing its affinity for binding to some other soft side. So, it was hard, it will remain as hard and it will bind also the hard centers until it is binding all 6 thiocyanate anions through nitrogen donor points around the iron site. But what happens if we just simply go for gold and when we see that the gold is there and this gold which is present as AU plus this particular species this AU plus. So, when we have the AU plus which is a soft acid. So, if it is a soft acid it will definitely bind to the corresponding center through sulfur because the sulfur end of thiocyanate is soft. So, sulfur end of the thiocyanate will be attracted to the gold and here instead of some straight way binding of these thiocyanate groups we can have some angular binding to the gold side. So, the gold in plus 1 oxidation state similarly in this list we do not have the copper, but if we have copper which was present as cupric ion and if this cupric ion is utilized for reaction with NCS minus we find that this particular case that copper can be reduced to copper 1 plus and that copper 1 plus can bind to NCS minus and once we have this that means, when it is in the plus 2 oxidation state it will have some choice for binding through nitrogen or sulfur, but if we are able to reduce it to copper 1 plus like gold it will again bind through sulfur only. forming the corresponding species as this. So, this is the usual thing when we see that if we have a copper compound or say dicopper compound and if some position is occupied there by water molecule and if we react it with NCS minus, it not only replace these water molecules, but also it can take out this copper as Cu NCS species and the internal electron transfer can take place, copper can be reduced and thiocyanate as pseudo halogen can be oxidized giving rise to this particular species as Cu SCN hole 2 minus and this species is very interesting species because it can also 
condense together and we can have some polymeric product out of the condensation of this particular species. So, we have like this gold we can have also the corresponding copper. So, immediately by these categories we can have the classification of the metal ions as well as the ligands for binding to the different ligand system. So, just now what we have seen also that the copper binding for this copper when we can have the cupric copper it can bind through nitrogen and four such NCS groups can surround the corresponding copper species. Similarly, if we have copper one the way we have just seen that the copper can bind to 2000 groups similarly it can bind also 3000 groups to give a species like Cu, Sc and whole 3 to minus. So, this particular thing is also interesting. So, when the reaction of copper with thiocyanate can take place and we have these ideas that this particular species as well as whole 3 2 minus can also form because if like mercury or like gold or like silver if copper is not remaining in this situation that means with a coordination number of 2 it can have a corresponding coordinated water molecule. So, if we have the corresponding coordinated water molecule so the coordination number of 3 can be fulfilled over there and if that species is there then we just have the corresponding ligand substitution reaction for the removal of this water molecule by thiocyanate giving rise to this species. And once this species is forming over there this can also go for condensation reaction for basically bridging species. So, different types of bridging can be formed by changing the corresponding pattern for the coordination number. So, coordination number is enhanced from 3 to 4 as well as the different types of arrangement for the loop formation can also take place and different types of these arrangements can take place from there because the initial starting compound what we can have we can have the situation that the copper which is already present as the copper 1 it is not always true that this particular species that means this one when it is there that means both of them are through sulfur. One of them can also be through nitrogen that means whenever we have the corresponding thing which we prepare in the laboratory for corresponding analysis of the copper as copper thiocyanate as white precipitate and that white precipitate can go rise to corresponding immediate formation of the copper 1 and the thiocyanate species and that can take up more and more of these thiocyanate anions to give this species or give that species. So, if one of these species is bound to sulfur the second when can bridge can go for the corresponding coordination through nitrogen. So, the nitrogen coordination is also there otherwise we do not have the corresponding bridging environment. So, this is other possibility of sulfur bonded thiocyanates to the copper center which is soft and the copper center in cuprous oxidation state is also soft. Then effect of ionic radius can be considered in a series of these metal ions which can be considered 
or known as Irving Williams series. It refers to the high spin octahedral divalent metal ions of the first transition series. So when we talk about the first transition series elements starting from manganese to zinc, we see that for high spin octahedral compound of these have some different types of stability order from manganese to iron to cobalt to nickel to copper it is related to the corresponding gain in the substitution of the water molecule by the incoming ligands as well as the corresponding crystal field stabilization energy that will be introduced in our future classes that how we calculate the corresponding crystal field stabilization energy to correlate the corresponding stabilities of these complexes. So, CFAC values can have some role to play with the stability of these corresponding complexes. Wide variety of ligands when we are talking about three strands of explanations in the series we can have the ionic radius is expected to decrease regularly from manganese to zinc that is why we get the order which is a normal periodic trend and would account for the general increase in stability of the system. This is the crystal field stabilization energy which also increases from manganese to nickel that is why the trend goes from directly from manganese to nickel which will make the complexes increasingly stable and CFAC returns to 0 for zinc. So that is why from manganese it is rising up to nickel it is reaching and when nickel it is in the maximum value and then it is dropping 0 to zinc. So the coordination equilibria what we are studying in this class is that it has some contribution from the crystal field stabilization also in the solution state because the crystal field stabilization energy will also be controlling the bonding pattern will also control the corresponding magnetic properties of all these. But in the solution the very basic reaction when the metal is added to the ligand system the very basic reaction the very basic metal ligand bond formation is also controlled by the formation of the corresponding complexes and if we are able to find out the corresponding crystal field which is true definitely as in the solid state like that of our crystals and we can have some stabilization like the entropy stabilization of the complexes we can have also the corresponding crystal field stabilization because we have some energy gain and that energy gain will be considered as the corresponding crystal field stabilization energy for the contribution what we see that how it is moving from manganese to the nickel. So when we talk about the zinc it will not have any preference but if we compare with the other metal ions of the series we can talk about the position of the zinc with respect to their corresponding stabilization as well as the stability. The CFAC of copper 2 is less than that of the zinc 2 in the octahedral copper 2 complexes but they all undergo gentle distortion which results in extra stability because it will not have some preference for go for the octahedral coordination it has low CFAC value but due to gentle effect it gains some extra stability to the system. The ionic radius effect is also applicable to the elements in the lanthanide series. The steady increase in stability of the complexes with a given ligand, one particular ligand is given which is binding to the lanthanides along with the series of trivalent lanthanides is known as the corresponding lanthanide contraction. As we move from one end to the other like that of the movement of manganese to zinc Similarly, for all the lanthanide elements, if we move from one side to the other, we have the corresponding lanthanide contraction. And the metal ligand binding in the metal to dithalate series also follow the corresponding this series because of the covalent and electrostatic contributions are interplaying between the metal ligand bonding and the corresponding energetics for the metal ligand bond formation. 
So if we just simply plot the thing what we are talking for all these classes that the k values, the formation constants for the different ligands like ethylene diamine, oxalic acid, glycine and the corresponding sulfur analog for the NH2CH2S minus. So, we are just steadily increasing from manganese to corresponding nickel or copper and it is dropping basically in zinc. So, KF series for the transition metal ions are basically following the series from Mn2 plus to iron to cobalt to nickel to copper and then it is dropping to zinc 2 plus. So, the formation constant, so any ligand if we take the neutral ligand, if we take the di negative ligand, if we take nitrogen oxygen bearing ligand, if we take the nitrogen sulfur bearing ligand, they follow this trend which is conforming the corresponding nature of the metal ion and the nature of the metal ion along with its CFSE will basically control this particular order. That we will see also in our future class when we will be talking about the determination of the corresponding CFSC values. So, thank you very much.